In this unit, our topic is culture studies. We'll focus on intelligence across cultures. By the end of this unit, you will be able to understand intelligence across cultures, identify the global structure of an academic essay, and summarize the research based on keywords. What are the differences of intelligence across cultures? Let's go to the text. Intelligence across cultures. In recent years, researchers have found that people in non-Western cultures often have ideas about intelligence that differ fundamentally from those that have shaped Western intelligence tests. Researchers of cultural differences in intelligence, however, face a major dilemma, namely, how to balance the desire to compare people from various cultures according to a standard measure with the need to assess people in the light of their own values and concepts. For instance, Richard Nisbet, co-director of the Culture and Cognition Programme at the University of Michigan, argues that East Asian and Western cultures have developed cognitive styles that differ in fundamental ways, including in how intelligence is understood. People in Western cultures, he suggests, tend to view intelligence as a means for individuals to devise categories and to engage in rational debate, while people in Eastern cultures see it as a way for members of a community to recognise contradiction and complexity and to play the social roles successfully. Other researchers have come to similar conclusions. In a study published in Intelligence, Volume 25, Number 1, Robert Sternberg, PhD of Yale University and Shi Ying Yang of Chen'an University in Taiwan found that Chinese conceptions of intelligence emphasize understanding and relating to others, including knowing when to show and when not to show one's intelligence. Such differences between Eastern and Western views of intelligence are tied, says Nisbet, to differences in the basic cognitive processes of people in Eastern and Western cultures. The distinction between East Asia and the West is only one of many cultural distinctions that separate different ways of thinking about intelligence. Robert Serpel, who is returning this year to the University of Zambia, spent a number of years studying the concepts of intelligence in rural African communities. He found that people in some African communities, especially where Western schooling has not yet become common, tend to blur the Western distinction between intelligence and social competence. In rural Zambia, for instance, the concept of Nzulu includes both cleverness and responsibility. When rural parents in Africa talk about the intelligence of children, they prefer not to separate the cognitive speed and aspect of intelligence from the social responsibility aspect, says Serpil. Likewise, among the law people in rural Kenya, it has been found that ideas about intelligence consist of four broad concepts, namely paro, or practical thinking, winjo, or comprehension, luro, which includes social qualities like respect, responsibility, and consideration, and raiko, which largely corresponds to the Western idea of academic intelligence, but also includes specific skill. Only the fourth is correlated with traditional Western measures of intelligence. In another study in the same community, Sternberg and his collaborators found that children who score highly on a test of knowledge about medicinal herbs, a measure of practical intelligence, tend to score poorly on tests of academic intelligence. The results, published in the journal Intelligence, volume 29, number 5, suggest that practical and academic intelligence can develop independently or even in conflict with each other, and the values of a culture may shape the direction in which a child develops. They also support a number of other studies which suggest that people who are unable to solve complex problems in the abstract can often solve them when they are presented in a familiar context. Patricia Greenfield of the University of California, Los Angeles, and Ashley Maynard 
now a professor of psychology at the University of Hawaii, conducted studies of cognitive development among children in a Mayan village in Mexico using toy looms, spools of thread and other materials drawn from the environment. The research suggested that the children's development can be validly compared to the progression described by Western theories of development, but only by using testing materials and experimental designs based on their own culture. The original hope of many cognitive psychologists was that a test that was absent of cultural bias could be developed. However, there seems to be an increasing weight of evidence suggests that this is unlikely. Raven's progressive matrices, for example, is one of several nonverbal intelligence tests that were originally advertised as culture-free, but are now recognized as culturally loaded. Such nonverbal intelligence tests are based on cultural constructs, which may be ubiquitous in some cultures, but almost non-existent in others. It is doubtful whether cultural comparisons of concepts of intelligence will ever enable us to move towards creating a test which encompasses all aspects of intelligence as understood by all cultures. It seems even less likely that such a test could be totally free of cultural imbalance somewhere. The solution to a dilemma seems to lie more in accepting that cultural neutrality is unattainable and that administering any valid intelligence test requires a deep familiarity with the relevant culture's values and practices. Hello, this is Yang Huang from Tsinghua University. I work in the Department of Foreign Languages and Literature. Today, I've invited two of my students to come here to talk about intelligence across cultures. Hello, this is Zuo Wan. I come from the Department of Foreign Language and Literature. Hello, this is Qin Zixiang. I also come from the Department of Foreign Language and Literature, and I majored in Japanese. Great. Now let's look at the paragraph. In the first paragraph, we have a few sentences. Now, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, I don't quite understand the meaning of namely here, so what's, what's the meaning of this word? You see, this is a very long sentence. Yes. Uh, from namely, we are giving a very general picture at the very beginning, and then start with namely, try to make it more concrete. Just, so, so just to separate two sentences? Uh, is one sentence, in the first part, you decide a general picture. In the second part, you give more detailed information. Mm -hmm. and uh, I also have a question about the word dilemma. Dilemma means you have different situations. Sometimes you have two choices, most of the time you have more than two choices. So dilemma means it's very hard decision to make. Mm -hmm. In the second paragraph, we also have very long sentences. So, uh, do you have any questions? Yes, I noticed there are two confusing questions. Well, one is will intelligence as a mean for, mm -hmm. and another is see it as a way for. Well, are there any difference here? Uh, actually, means of means of way of doing things. They are very similar. And this uh, yes, about this engage in. What does this actually mean? Engage in means participate in. Or take part in. Now let's come to the third paragraph. Zhu so, Xiao, do you have any questions? Yes, about this cognitive. What does it mean? Cognitive is one's mental process. You know, when we think, when we know things, when we inform others about the new information, all this process is called mental process. This is what we mean by cognitive. Now let's look at paragraph four. Uh, we have a very long sentence here. Do you have any questions? Uh, yes, I have a question. I don't quite understand the school here. I think school is a noun, but why do you also use school? Schooling is also a noun. It refers to Western education. Uh, actually, it means schools which adopt Western values in education. So, how about the word blur? Blur is a verb which means it's not very clear. Here the writer wants to say the gap between the Western and the Eastern idea about uh, intelligence is difficult to so, recognize. 
So they failed to find the differences. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. They failed to find the difference between the two. So, and I was uh, wondering about the meaning of confidence. Confidence means ability. It is like, like uh, you are able to do something, you say, I have a lot of confidence. That means ability. Ability to learn a language. In the next paragraph, we also have a very long sentence here. Do you have any questions? Yes. I found that the use of shape here is far different from what we have used before. So can you explain the shape, the use of shape uh, to us? Yes, shape is uh, used as a verb here. It means decide and influence. Next paragraph, there are two or three long sentences. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, what about this an uh, increasing way of evidence means? And increasing weight of evidence means more and more evidences. It has nothing to do with the weight. And other difficulty in this paragraph? Yes, I think one word is very difficult to understand. Uh, this word is ubiquitous. So what does, it, does the word mean? Ubiquitous means everywhere. And about construct, what about this? Construct is a noun. It means concept. Do you have any other questions? Uh, yes, I think this is a very long and complicated sentence and I find it difficult to get the point of it. Do you need a last sentence? Yes. Okay. In this sentence, researchers of cultural differences in intelligence refer to some researchers who study the cultural differences in intelligence, namely introduces a new sentence which gives more concrete idea of the study of cultural differences in intelligence. This sentence means that we are using different standard measures to judge people according to their values and concepts. In this sentence, we notice that there is a contrast between Western cultures and Eastern cultures. View intelligence as a means for, see it as a way for. These two expressions are similar. A means for means a way of doing something. Engage in rational debate means to participate in a meaningful debate. In the last sentence, there are two verbs. One is to recognize contradiction and complexity. It means to realize the diversity and differences between community members from different cultures. Another verb is to play their social roles. These differences in Eastern and Western views about intelligence are closely related to the basic cognitive processes of those in different cultures. Here, cognitive means relating to the mental process while we learn, know, and understand something. In this sentence, Western schooling means education at school which adopts Western values. Blur means to fail to see the difference between intelligence and social competence. Competence means the ability to do something well. In this sentence, practical intelligence and academic intelligence are a pair, which may develop together but separately or may contrast strongly with each other. In this sentence, a number of studies show that some people who cannot solve abstract problems can solve these problems if they are presented in a familiar context. An increasing weight of evidence refers to more and more evidence. Ubiquitous means everywhere, easily found. In this sentence, some nonverbal intelligence tests show that cultural constructs may exist in one culture but do not exist in another culture. The best way to deal with this difficulty is that we must take cultural neutrality as the norm, and when we organize any intelligence test, we need to understand in depth the relevant culture and common practice and accepted values in these cultures.